When a vessel is planned or scheduled for anchorage, it may be somewhat similar to making a passage plan. You may have to appraise the anchorage grounds, plan the safest approach of anchoring, executing the plan made, and monitoring once the vessel is anchored. In this video, I'll try to simplify everything, including main points like how many shackles to use, computing for radius swing, reporting anchoring condition, and monitoring anchorage area. Let's go! Availabilities of anchorage areas on the chart are specified very depending on vessel types. It may sometimes be provided by local agents or shore authorities, but you must also see to it that the area is suitable for your vessel as well. One must consider the weather, closeness to shoreline, traffic density, water depth, and the condition of holding ground. Charts, publications, and weather forecasts must also be up to date for an accurate view of how the area planned for anchorage. When planning for the amount of cable to use, some factors like water depth, strength of wind and current, and anchorage congestion must be considered. The general guide states that the cable length should be three times that of the water depth, plus 90 meters in normal condition, dividing the result by 27.5 as one shackle is equal to 27.5 meters. For example, a depth of 25 meters should have six shackles of cable length. Whereas in rough weather conditions, the cable length should be 4 times that of the water depth plus 150 meters dividing the result by 27.5. For example, a depth of 25 meters in rough weather should have 9 shackles of cable length. Following this, swing radius must be obtained to help choose a safe anchoring spot and maintain a good distance from other vessels, shallow areas, and hazards. Computing for swing radius is simple. For example, you plan to anchor at a depth of 25 meters using 6 shackles. Length of your vessel is 200 meters. Formula will be number of shackles which is 6 times 27.5 meters plus 200 meters minus water depth of 25 meters. Divide the result to 1852 to convert to nautical miles. So there must be at least 0.21 nautical miles of swing radius for you to keep a safe distance from other anchored vessels or obstructions. Points to consider before you anchor. First is determining which anchor is to be used, port or starboard. Some say it depends what hemisphere you're in as wind directions differ on each side or what's known as the Coriolis effect. Others use a rotating approach alternating the usage of both anchors respectively. Others point out what direction your propeller turns for maneuvering convenience. In my opinion, all are plausible either way. What's important is that the anchor must be in good holding and heaving condition and the anchorage area has a good holding ground. Next to consider is the sternway speed when walking back or letting go of the anchor. This will depend how large the ship is. In general, it should be limited to 0.5 to 1 knot and when it comes to VLCCs, speed should be around 0.25 to 0.5 knots to avoid excessive strain on the chain. This is done to avoid the piling of chain at the seabed. Failure to do so may lead to fouling of the anchor when heaving. For the master to know the status of the operation, OOW of the operation must be able to identify the number of shackles, direction of lead, and condition of stay. 12 o'clock, long stay, slack. Number of shackles are based from the canter shackle. The painted chains on either side of the canter will be the ones you'll be counting. For example, in this illustration, it is read as three shackles. Direction of chain is reported using clock format. Imagine you're standing on a large clock. You will base the directions from 12 o'clock mark, which is the bow. Everything the port will be 6 to 12 o'clock, and everything the starboard is 12 to 6 o'clock. Unless otherwise it crosses the bow. Condition of stay is based on the angle of how the chain is leading to the water. Up and down when the chain is perpendicular to the water surface. Short stay when the anchor is a few degrees in any direction. 
medium stay when the angle is a few degrees more outside the short stay, long stay when the chain is at its farthest. Following the condition of stay is the tightness of chain whether it's slack, moderately tight, tight, or very tight. So if a chain depicts something like this, report should follow as Six shovels on deck, 12 o'clock, long stay, moderate tight. Another example. Six shovels on deck, 10 o'clock, short stay, slack. You will be able to know that the anchor has held onto the seabed once the chain has tightened and slacked afterwards. When this happens, OW must report Bridge, forward, or not or not up. Finishing the operation, chain stopper must be applied, the windlass disengaged and on break, and anchor ball hoisted in daytime and anchor lights displayed during nighttime. Following the dropping of the anchor, the responsible person at the bridge must immediately plot the GPS position and switch on anchor watches on the radar and egg this. This will plot the reference point in monitoring the swing of the vessel caused by external forces. At all times, vessel must be within this circle. OOW must take further action if the vessel approaches the circle's limit as the chances of anchor dragging is probable. In addition to these, OOW must constantly monitor wind speed, current flow, and vessel's motion. The best practice is to activate the pass track feature to trace any unusual changes in the ship's swing pattern and whether the vessel is dragging her anchor. Aside from monitoring your vessel, a responsible OW must always be aware of vessels nearby. You may call out a vessel's attention through VHF or Aldis lamp if they appear to be too close for comfort. By the time the vessel is ready to pick up the anchor, a head speed should be at a minimum while heaving up and anchor wash switched on to remove any mud caught on the anchor chain. OW of the operation must ensure that twists and kinks are sighted immediately and in time to stop the heaving process. Same procedures are still applied when reporting anchor condition for the master at the bridge to know the heaving status. Additional reports like anchor spotted, when anchor is seen resurfacing the water, and anchor home to state that the anchor was safely heaved and secured to its position at the bow. Hey, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up and hit that notification bell. If you loved it, subscribe. Peace.